everyone wants to know, can I even travel? People want to know, can I fly? I actually did sit down with Jim Rett from the Inside Edition. We talked about important steps to take when you're traveling. Dr. Stark, you're on a flight, and there's so many potential areas of infection. If anyone around me is coughing, I'll actually turn the vent on high and have that air go right across my face, and that creates a little bit of an air shield. To me, wiping everything down creates a false sense of security. You may or may not get everything wiped down. If you don't touch your eyes or your nose, it doesn't matter if the virus is on your hand. It's not gonna get you sick. Count the handles. You've got the handle to get in, the handle to get out, the handle to lock it. I will absolutely use a paper towel to turn the faucet off. I use my elbow to shut the bathroom door. Travel aware, don't travel afraid if there's a takeaway. That's Why? good stuff. We were talking before the show, and in order to keep people from becoming infected here, mm -hmm. we have to address the problem in West yes. Africa. Yes, because what happens, suppose you're a traveler, you're, you're a Westerner, if you think you've been exposed and you're in West Africa, what's the first thing you're gonna, gonna wanna do? You wanna get out of town, you're gonna, gonna get to a Western country to get treated, and so I think that, the, the, the borders and, and the, um, you know, the, the screening processes that didn't work with Mr. Duncan, mm -hmm. you know, I think that is what's scary it's, to me. The Ebola River's always been there, right? Ebola River's Is the virus been there. new? It was first isolated in 1974, and uh, it, it, it's a zoonotic illness, which basically means that it started in animals, and we got it from animals. And so, like, when we think about the lady in Spain, the physician assistant, she's wondering how she got it. Her family's wondering how she got it. She was always in protective gear when, it, when she got it. They actually had to put her dog to sleep uh -huh. because of the fact that this can actually live in animals as well. So it's a very scary illness. And that's the way it is with, with a lot of these viruses. We learn as we go. The one thing I want to address, U.S. screening, Obama's announced that we're not going to have more rigorous screening at the airports where a lot of travelers may come in from what West Africa. What will they do? You land? What, what well, will they the take, biggest take thing they're doing is checking for fever. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing I will say is this is flawed. Yeah. What If I have a fever, what can I take to make that fever go down? Take Tylenol, take it, oh, yeah. Right, so yeah. you could, if you Tylenol were trying... Tylenol sales at the airports are going to go way up. And Brad, let me ask you, let me ask yeah. you this. Let yeah. me ask you, as a doctor. Yeah. Would you at least be willing to acknowledge that, that if I'm an individual in West Africa and I were to potentially be infected, I would want, if I had the resources, to get on a plane mm -hmm. to a place like the U.S. where treatment is available. And people are there is lie. an incentive for people to not be in completely truthful with who you have or haven't been in contact with. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is pop... Uh, a non-steroidal medicine, get on the plane, and there's no one who's going to be able to tell you have a fever. Is that a concern of yours as an ID expert? Well, yeah, I, I, but you don't even have to go there because the incubation period is 21 days. So you can get ex exposed to, get infected by Ebola, have no symptoms and no fever, get through the screening because you legitimately have, you haven't taken any medicine, you just don't have a fever, like Mr. Duncan. This yes. is, mm -hmm. Mr. Duncan would not have been caught by these screening methods. Mm. And the public health experts realize and understand that this is imperfect, you, but better you, than before. Would you stop all flights in? You know, yeah, it, there might, are, it might come to that. The, it, there are some extremely smart people. You know, Tony Fauci at NIH is about the smartest person I've ever met. I know Tony. I've interviewed and him. he feels strongly that we not do that. I don't have the expertise about international relations to say, should we or should we not cross the border? Well, at we, the moment... If we close the border, what it's going to do is get this, this really strong fear thing going, yeah, and, yeah. and it's, it's going to cause mass chaos, which I don't mm -hmm. think is going to do well, anything in terms part. of controlling the virus. That's the because, fear we have a 24-hour news. Sure, because... Uh, it, do we produce so much fear that we make it bigger than it is? Hey, I'm Dr. Travis Stork. Press here to subscribe to the Doctor's YouTube channel and press here to help reduce tension.